I have to respond to the lies that Zack Knight has posted at his website, Crazy Gale? Um, he is uh, trying to portray me to the world as a paranoid schizophrenic, and he kept saying that I have delusions of reference, and that this is where I get my crazy idea that nine-tenth, I, I really believe that about nine-tenths of the storyline in, in Brent Spiner's Dreamland um, is is almost exactly like the storyline that I have in The Forbidden Abyss Part 1. And uh, Zach is saying that I'm imagining all this, that it's not really true, and I have delusions of reference, some sort of fancy psychiatric term for, a, I guess, a schizophrenic, um, to describe a schizophrenic. Uh, that's, that's an awful lot of uh, delusions of reference, you know, nine-tenths. I really do believe that if you listen to the video that I made of I actually put excerpts from Brent Spiner's Dreamland onto the video along with written commentary to show how that actual excerpt illustrates a part of my book The Forbidden Abyss and if you click on the link right underneath this video you can watch that video. I also have it on three of the web pages at my website uh, Gabriel Chana dot com slash biography dot html gabrielchana dot com slash portfolio dot html and gabrielchana dot com slash blog blog dot html any of those pages they open up with the video that I'm referring to that of course I might change that I'm making this on in October 2013 I think I'm going to leave my website like that for at least a month so for the next month, if you open up on those pages, it, it actually opens up to the video that I'm referring to. Um, so, nine tenths, that's a lot. For delusions of reference, um, it's, it's too much to be just a coincidence. A nine tenths of the storyline in Brent Spiner's Dreamland matches what I write about in my book, The Forbidden Abyss, Part 1. Uh, Zach Knight's trying to make it appear like I'm some sort of promiscuous brain-to-brain -brain lover. When Brent Spiner made Dreamland in 2008, he was my like my 100% brain-to-brain lover. I, I started brain-to-brain -brain loving in 2003 with Vladimir Putin, and Vladimir Putin is the one who introduced me to it. And then when I kind of like dropped Vladimir romantically for Brent in 2006, then Brent became my primary brain-to-brain -brain lover. You may say, what about the men on the marriage list? Most of the guys on my marriage list didn't get introduced till 2008. Matthew McConaughey had a one-month stint when Vladimir Putin had a near-fatal heart attack in November 2005, and he filled in for Vladimir, and I did that mainly for Vladimir's peace of mind. I didn't want... Vladimir to worry about me because any stress could have killed him then. He, his heart attack was so severe that my men actually had to lay in a bed beside him and allow their heart to pump as his because basically his heart exploded. It was a Jesuit induced heart attack. So I'm actually quite loyal in my brain to brain loving. And, um, and even up to now, Brent Spider is like the main one. So, And I only go to the others when Brent tells me to. So you know, that's just a bunch of baloney. Oh, and then trying to insinuate that that Franco and I had a brain-to-brain -brain relationship. We did. We most certainly did not. When Franco Nero um, was my main lover, and that would have been from 1996 to 1999, it was not brain-to-brain. -brain. We didn't have brain-to-brain -brain in the 1990s, me and my men. Uh, Brent Spiner had a wiretap on my phone, and he added other people onto my wiretap, like Franco Nero. And so Franco Nero and I, Franco was listening to me on my wiretap phone. And that's how that relationship was. It was I did most of the talking, and Franco listened. And even though Franco posted his email because he wanted me to email, I could email him. I could tell I didn't feel it was wise to do so. So I never emailed Franco. I, I, it was perfectly safe for me to talk to him on the phone. So that's the way I did it. I even spoke to him all in Italian on some days. I became half fluent in Italian for Franco. So that's a bunch of crap at Crazy Gale where he's saying that Franco and I became brain to brain. We, we never did. Um, 
The reason that Brent actually likes it that, that people like Matthew McConaughey and Hugh Jackman are on my marriage list because the Jesuits are trying to portray me to the world as a middle-aged, schizophrenic, um, you know, dump of a woman who's really crazy and nutty, nutty, and that that Brent Spider could never want. So Brent actually likes it that that men like Vladimir Putin, uh, Vladimir Putin, Matthew McConaughey, Hugh Jackman, and Gerard Butler are on the marriage list. It makes me appear hot. Jesus actually said I was hot. So you know, uh, to uh, to my men, I'm hot, and they're proud of me. And uh, Brent is not jealous. He he's the one who told me to make brain to brain loving to the others every now and then. And Jesus likes it too. Jesus told me that in the millennium, Brent Spiner will be my husband, but I will be allowed to go make, uh, to have loving with more than one man in the millennium. And um, my next book, I'll be going into why Jesus feels this way and why he's made an exception for me. But Jesus approves of my love for Brent. You know, when I was married to my ex-husband who was cold and cruel towards me, but that's not why I divorced him. I divorced him because I really felt my life was in danger. And it wasn't because of emotional abuse. He was actually a little bit, one time he actually was a little physical abuse with me. And um, he, um, he did not want to spend any money on me for health or medical expenses unless it was covered by the military medical insurance. A very stingy person. And I could tell he loved his income more than he loved me. And uh, Jesus even agreed with me that if I had stayed in that marriage that my ex-husband would have killed me. Uh, maybe not directly, but indirectly through physical, through just dessert, but not taking care of me medically when, I, you know, when I'm sick and cooperating with the Jesuits to destroy my health, physical, mental, in every way. So I did the right thing to get out of that marriage. And he was a Jesuit. Actually, he is a Jesuit. It's really sad because when I married him, he was a pretty nice guy. And the Jesuits started switching him out bit by bit with his Jesuit clone. So that by the time I divorced him, he was 100% a Jesuit and very dangerous for that reason. Um, it's sad. Um, so, you know, what's really strange is when I was married to Brent, not Brent, to, to my ex-husband, and I lived in Seattle, and we were about to get transferred, and this was 1993, I believe it was. And out of 100, 120 possible duty stations, we were transferred to Hugh, Galveston, Texas, which is basically Houston, Texas, where Brent grew up. At this time, Brent and I were just crazy about each other, and I saw this as a sign from God that he approved of my love for Brent. And accident. And I, out of 120, I didn't tell my ex-husband that that was Brent Spiner's hometown. And then when we moved to Galveston, we didn't want. To, I said, let's not live on the island because of hurricanes in case, and let's go inland. So I wanted to move to Houston, and then I would travel out to where Brent grew up, which was Bel Air, Texas. And I'd drive by the high school where his Cecil Pickett drama teacher was, and it wasn't. He lived, he lived in a pretty classy neighborhood in Houston, and I used to drive through there. I would say it was like upper middle class. And I drove through his neighborhood every couple weeks, and I'd get my notes and take research for Silver Skies. And I, I placed many of my scenes in Silver Skies from actual uh, scene descriptions I took of where Brent grew up. I went to Meyerland and Bel Air, Texas. That's where Brent grew up in Texas. He's a Texas guy. And I believe God stationed me there on purpose. And that was the fact that I got stationed in Houston, Texas, when I was working on the novel about my love for Brent, is a sign that Jesus approved of my feelings for Brent. And even though at that time I was married. So while I was married to my husband, Jesus moved me to Houston, Texas, so I could um, make many of the scenes in my novel Silver Skies in Brent's hometown. I'm not a Texan. I'm from Florida. But the Lord let me live in Texas for a while and, and so I could go over and visit Brent's hometown. And Zach's trying to insinuate that uh, Jesus was angry at me because I was married and um, communicating loving stuff with Brent. In my next book, I'll be going into how Jesus feels about this because it's Jesus' point of view. But for obvious reasons, 
Jesus approved of my long distance romance with Brent, or he wouldn't have moved me to Houston, Texas. You say, oh, coincidence. So how many coincidences are there, Zach Knight? He'll just try to cover this all up and say, oh, that's another delusion of reference. You're just imagining that God sent you to Houston. I mean, yeah, out of 120 possible stations, I get there. Okay. Um, Zach Knight is really out of line in claiming that anything that Brent said or say, sang in Dreamland was referring to Brent Spiner's penis. Go read his junk at crazygale.com. He's got his whole page now about Dreamland. I was right that I hit a Jesuit nerve on that because he made a whole big, huge, stinking page about Dreamland. And he actually insinuated that Brent Spiner was singing about his penis in some sections. That is absolutely absurd. Um, another thing, uh, Zach Knight is trying to paint me as this woman who has a morbid obsession with death. Actually, I don't think about death that often. In fact, I hardly ever think about death. You know why? Because I'm not worried about death because I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. You know who probably has to think about death a lot is somebody like Zach Knight because when he dies, he's going to be in big trouble. See, but he's already died and he came back. Yeah, but you know, Jesus told me that even though he's the Antichrist, he can still get saved. So I'm hoping that uh, the Lord can use my book to uh, reach him. I'm going to try. Even if I fail, it's a noble goal. Um, I don't have a fixation with death. I have a fixation with life and loving and Jesus. You know what I love to think about? I love thinking about Jesus all day long. And... I don't think about death. You know, I, I don't I don't think about death because I'm not worried about death because I know where I'm going. He's, he says, oh, she has a fixation with death. She had her two main characters in Silver Skies, the one patterned after herself and the one after Brent, to die on her. Uh, he's lying. And he knows he's lying. Uh, unless he thinks the rapture is death. <laughs> Maybe he does. Because to him, it probably would be death, so since he's supposed to be the Antichrist. You see, if Zach Knight doesn't accept Jesus' way to, way to heaven, which is not through Satan, which is his best buddy right now, Satan and Jesus told me Satan and Zach Knight meet at least once a week. So um, if Jesus does not, ex I'm not, if Zach doesn't accept Jesus as the only way to heaven, the rapture will be death. You know, I apparently when he read Silver Skies, he thought the rapture is death. So uh, he needs to get his facts straight. Saying, oh, your two main characters in Silver Skies died. Um, well, if you think the rapture means death, yeah, but you know what the Bible says about rapture? It's, it's those who never die. It's the opposite of death. See, my, um, the rapture is a pr prominent theme in all of my writings. All of my writings. And that, I, you know what I'm obsessed with? I'm, I, I'm obsessed with the rapture because you know what? I personally believe that I'm not going to die. I, I could be wrong on this, but I think I'm going to be raptured. I think I'm going up, man. Oh, man. In fact, I believe it so much. I'm making it the main theme. The rapture is like the main theme of my next book. And, you know, with the Jesus Christ as the main character, that's a perfect theme. You said you got a rapture theme? Oh, yeah. My next book is all about the rapture. All about the rapture. It's nothing. No, it's it's all about about going into the next life without ever dying a physical death. That's what I'm obsessed with. I'm obsessed with Jesus. With Jesus coming again every day. I'm looking up and saying maybe today he'll come. That's not an obsession with death. That's an obsession with life. Because those of us who are born-again Christians, we can look forward to a day when someday there's going to be a rapture. And all of us who are born-again Christians, the bride of Christ, we're going to go up in the air without dying. Those in the grave will go first, and then those which are alive and remain will go up next. That's what I'm obsessed with.